In the budget yesterday was the long-awaited Canada Disability Benefit, taking a step towards establishing a framework to lift people with disabilities out of poverty. But some advocates were disappointed by the funding that was allocated. And as you heard from our earlier caller, $200 per month uh, as a maximum benefit for low-income Canadians with disabilities. Joining me now is Michelle Hewitt, Chair of Disability Without Poverty. She's based in B.C. but traveled to Ottawa for the federal budget and joins us now from there. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon, Michelle. How are you? I am okay. I, I, I'd like to ask you about the disability benefit, but I, I could see you through our video connection reacting there um, to our caller in Squamish. Oh, really? Rick, my heart reaches out to you. I mean, this is what we're here to talk about, right? He talks about um, needing $4,000 to be able to afford to live in Squamish. Well, let, you know, let's think about our disabled people in BC who are on $1,400 and 58 cents, um, $1,458, excuse me, I'm a, a little bit jet lagged here. And that, um, you know, average rent in Squamish is 2000 So no disabled people living there then. And now we have the Canada Disability Benefit, which mm -hmm. was meant to lift disabled people out of poverty, poverty line in uh, Vancouver, Squamish is um, $2,300. And the benefit is 200 bucks. So that takes them to 1,600 bucks. Well, um, this has been a long wait, right? And, and uh, advocates like yourself were worried that this was going to pass again, this budget without any progress on the benefits. So yeah. you know, how are you feeling about it? So you, you are correct. And a few weeks ago, um, we thought that this budget was going to go by with nothing in it. So there's a little bit more than nothing. And, you know, it's set out some dates. It's set out that they, they're hoping to get money flowing by next July, which was the date that we had kind of got into our heads as well. Mm. But um, I understand incrementalism. I understand that the government says that they're beginning low and hoping to build. They say that they're hoping in, in the, the blurb that goes with the numbers to bring this up to the level of OAS plus GIS, which is in this, you know, not quite $1,800 in the $1,700. Well, that is still below the poverty line. So the government has a piece of legislation for disabled people that is meant to take into consideration the poverty line and the additional cost of disability. And yesterday they say 200 bucks and they say, but we want to bring you to the level of OAS and GIS. And I kind of, you know, it's like, I, I'm not quite sure what happened there because that is not lifting disabled people out of poverty. It, the the benefit would also apply only to those who access a disability tax credit. Who does that leave out? Yeah. Oh, so that at the moment, we think, because there, there aren't hard figures on this, but we think in Canada, um, there are 1.5 million people that should be able to access this benefit from their age and their level of severity of their disability. The number of people who are currently on disability tax credit is roughly 300,000. So it's missing out over a million people. By my calculations, in BC, of the people who are on what we call here PWD, um, our disability assistance payment, mm -hmm. there's 120,000 people on that. We're missing out 75,000 people that have already qualified have uh, been said by the province of BC that you have the level of disability that we're going to give you assistance. And as I say, there's 60% of those people aren't on disability tax credit. What it says in the budget is they're going to put money aside to pay for the, the medical forms to be filled in by doctors. Well, we also mm -hmm. know that in BC, we have a million people with no doctor. And we know that our doctors are rushed off their feet. It's not like they're looking for extra work. And so we're going to pay people, them to fill in people's forms somehow, when we have already asked people to jump through hoops to be approved for disability assistance in BC for what we all call PWD. Um, why aren't those hoops good enough? Why aren't those, those hoops good enough for the whole, uh, the whole kit and cabangle?
That does harken back to what we heard from our earlier caller um, in the first half hour, Tracy and Penticton, who talked about, you know, what she would like is more of a, a more communication with provinces on on how to streamline things. So what, what where does this leave you now? So um, the disability community has been getting in touch with, um, you know, obviously media directly. They've been getting getting in touch with us and making their feelings known to us. And I would imagine and I would hope that pretty much every MP's phone line is pretty hot at the moment as well. This isn't the end, right? This is merely the beginning, right? And we have a lot of chances here to keep putting this pressure on. So at Disability Without Poverty, and, you know, I represent both nationally and we have a strategy based specifically here in BC that we intend to keep telling our stories because our stories as disabled people are simply unforgettable. One of the people that I talk to lives in long-term care is left with $222 a month because in, when you're in long-term care, the money is taken off the top of your PWD and that's what you're left with for everything else. He is on a medication that costs $9 a day. Um, he, he simply can't afford it. This $200 really isn't going to make that much difference either. He's still not really going to be able to afford it. Those are the messages that we need to get through. We need to explain the exact mechanics of how this does not work. You know, like Rick talking about um, housing and how those dollars don't work. The government can change these numbers anytime it wants to. Um, formal mechanisms, it has a full economic statement, it can change things then. But we know, we see the government do it all the time. It can make a decision any day of the week. So the time for us to keep the pressure on is not over, it is merely beginning. Um, it's funny, I, I, I was telling people I have a playlist while um, I'm walking my Leo, my service dog, and one of the th songs that came up the morning before I got on the plane was Tracy Ta Chapman talking about a revolution and the next sentence is sounds like a whisper and out loud I said no it sounds like a roar and that's what this revolution has to be here. We commissioned along with um, a food bank out of Toronto an Angus Reid poll and we'd done it before and it told us that 88% of Canadians supported the Canada Disability Benefit. We just repeated it. 91% of Canadians now say that they support the Canada Disability Benefit. Canadians support it. Disabled people need it. The government need to get behind it. Michelle Hewitt, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you once again, Michelle. Take care.